So early in life, growing up in Minnesota, the medical missionary movement made us keenly aware of the developing world. And many, many students I, I went to college with became Fulbrights. I, I didn't become a Fulbright fellow myself. I was always an admirer and a Fulbright wannabe. But I, I went to medical school in global health because of an interest in diseases affecting the poorest of the poor in Africa and, and Asia. And of course, Fulbright provides opportunities, particularly for recent college graduates, to go to all parts of the world. And so I, I think my whole career has been looking at global issues in a very Fulbright-like manner. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. So what do you think, what, in, what inspires you the most about Fulbright? Well, it makes me wish I were 25 years old again. <laughs> the notion that in spite of changes in administrations in Washington, the program has continued and flourished. It's something I think the American, the American people are, are very proud of. They probably don't know as much about it as they should. And bringing the Fulbright Fellowship to the awareness of the public would probably be a very good thing for the public as well as for Fulbright. But there are very few outward looking programs that are so constructive and so unanimously admired as, as Fulbright. So this is the Fulbright 70th. I, I'm old enough, I'm 67. I remember seeing J. William Fulbright on Meet the Press and hearing about the Fulbright my whole life. So I, I, I see the Fulbright as like the, the Nobel Prize for humanitarian worldwide act, activities, which many people can participate in. So what are the, the parallels, because you have this high honor being a Nobel Prize laureate, and then comparing that to the Fulbright Prize or the Fulbright laureates that we have, what similarities do you see between those two? Sure. Well, awards like the Fulbright Award or the Nobel Award recognize individuals, and oftentimes this is for something very special. In terms of the Nobels, it's oftentimes a lucky discovery that led to something, or in the case of peace, something that provided long-lasting improvements. So I, I would see that Fulbright is the equivalent of the Nobel Peace Award, where actually constructive activities were, were done that contributed to the safety and the well-being of people worldwide, particularly those in the poorest parts of the world. Um, I think what else? What else do you think is? Um, what? How do you view your role as a Nobel laureate and also someone who's very connected with the Fulbright programs and Fulbright associations? You're kind of a special person who has both of those connections. Uh, what? How do you view your role? Well, view, viewing my role is, it's, it's an opportunity to do to do things that I've always wanted to do as a high school student in Minnesota, I traveled through the Soviet Union, camping, actually even campgrounds with Russians, an opportunity made possible because they had a wonderful young German teacher who brought some of his university friends. So early on in my life, I, I became wedded to the idea that international travel and international experiences are very special. And following college, before medical school, I spent the better part of a year traveling through East Asia, Southeast Asia, India, Pakistan, Iran, Afghanistan. So I've, I've always aspired to having a, a global vision. And even though I'm 67 and I'm afflicted with Parkinson's, there's still opportunities. I'm getting out there. So I, I see the Fulbright as something that is a permanent American activity. I hope my grandchildren become Fulbrighters. The four ch children we've raised all have had international experiences early on, and I think they would unanimously agree with that. So now I'm going to ask the last two questions. Um, one is your piece of advice for the younger generation who are just considering getting into a Fulbright and not sure what it is. And the other one, the last question, is a piece of advice for um, people who are alumni, who have already been through the Fulbright program, have had a great experience, and now that's it, it's over. What do they do next? So, two pieces of advice, 
one for the younger incoming generation and one for the kind of alumni generation. Sure. And say it like this. If I had a piece of advice to give to the younger generation, it would be... So if I were asked for my advice to the younger generation, I would without question tell them to get involved. And I can think of no better organization to be involved with than the Fulbright. This will take them to places in the world they, they probably would not have even thought about and will change their lives. And not only change their lives, it will change the lives of the people in the countries they visit and the Americans who remained in the States. It's, it's an investment in the well-being of the world. And for those who've had experiences as Fulbright Fellows, the Fulbright alumni, they, they have a special responsibility to share that excitement. Looking back in our lives as we get older, there's some things that stand out. And usually the things that we're consumed with worrying about, taxes, bills, they, they get taken care of and you, you, you don't worry about them so much. But the personal experiences, particularly the international experiences, the friends made are a lifelong treasure. And I'm sure the Fulbright alumni have a great treasure, and I would advise them to share this whenever and wherever they have an opportunity. This is one of the finest things about the United States. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, is there anything else you want to say? Any words of wisdom or any remarks you want to make sure get captured on video for Sunday? Listen to your mothers. Your mothers have good advice. My mother had great advice. She's 92 and still get, giving me some very specific and thoughtful advice. I'm glad she did.